On this channel, I've showcased a few ways to load games onto the PlayStation 2 using Open PS2 Loader. I showed how to load games from a hard drive or SSD, as well as a custom memory card called MX4 SIO, also known as MC2 SIO. But now I'm going to show you another plug and play method that allows you to play games on the PS2 utilizing the Ethernet port on the back of the console directly from a Raspberry Pi. And the results are pretty amazing. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a look at yet another really cool way to load games onto your PlayStation 2, but this time using a Raspberry Pi connected directly to the Ethernet port of the console. Now I know this sounds a bit strange and you may be asking why I'd want to load games from a Raspberry Pi over the Ethernet port. Well, the primary reason is the data transfer speed of the Ethernet port itself. It's much faster than if you were to load games off of the USB ports, which we know cause several issues when playing games, such as stuttering full motion video playback and long load times. Also, it's super easy to set up and get running. This method of loading games is called PSX to Pi SMB Share and was created by Paul DiCarlo, also known as Toolbox. In a nutshell, Paul created a custom pre-configured Raspbian OS for the Raspberry Pi. It runs Samba Share and reconfigures the Ethernet port of the Raspberry Pi so that it acts as a router, which gives us low latency access to Samba Share through an Ethernet connection between the Raspberry Pi and the PS2. In short, we can plug a USB thumb drive with our PS2 library to the Raspberry Pi and then access those games from the PS2 using OPL. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to get started using this method. Then I'll walk you through the steps of how to set everything up, go through the features of this setup, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing you'll need is of course a Raspberry Pi. I have a 3B Plus model, which I bought a while ago and wasn't really using, but this method is compatible with Raspberry Pi models 1, 2, 3, and 4. I haven't personally tried this with all models and can only speak to the 3D Plus, which actually handles this method really well. So next you'll need a micro SD card, which will hold the custom Raspbian OS. Paul recommends anything above 8GB in size. Here I'll be using a 16GB SanDisk Ultra micro SD card. You'll also need a USB thumb drive. This is where we'll be storing all of our PS2 games. I'm just using this 16GB drive that I had lying around. Additionally, you'll need an Ethernet cable to connect the Pi to the PS2. Here, I'm using a one foot long CAT7 cable, which is absolutely overkill for this application. A CAT5 cable would be more than adequate to do the job. Also, there's no need for a crossover cable. Just a regular one is all that's needed. Now, if you're gonna be using a fat model PS2, you will need a network adapter. However, for those of you using a slim model PS2, you're good to go since it already has an Ethernet jack built in. And lastly, you'll need a memory card with free McBoot and OPL installed. Okay, so that's everything we need to get started. So without any further ado, let me show you how to get everything all set up. Okay, so this whole process starts on your PC. So let's go ahead and insert our micro SD card into the computer. And even though it may be brand new, we're gonna format it using an application called SD Card Formatter, which again, I'll have linked in the video description. Great, once the SD card is formatted, head over to the PSX to Pi SMB Share GitHub and download the latest release of the software, which happens to be version 1.9 as of the making of this video. Now, this is a pretty large file. It's just over a gigabyte. I already have it saved on my desktop. So let's go ahead and extract it. I'll be using the application 7-zip. This will create a folder on your desktop and when you open it, you'll find yet another file that we'll need to extract. So let's go ahead and do that. What we have now is the image file that we'll need to write to our SD card. To write this image file to our SD card, we'll be using an application called Bolina Etcher. Again, I'll have it linked in the video description. 
With Bolina Etcher open, go ahead and select the file we want to write to the SD card, which is the PSX to Pi SMB share image. Then select the SD card we'll be writing to, which is the one we just formatted, and then click Flash. Now this will take a bit since it is kind of a large file, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the footage. Okay, great. The image file has been written to the SD card. So now go ahead and remove it from the computer and then insert it into the Raspberry Pi. I'll be hooking it up to an external monitor through HDMI, as well as connecting my USB keyboard so we can see the PSX to Pi SMB Share OS initialize and set itself up for the first time. Okay, with the HDMI hooked up and the keyboard connected, go ahead and power on the unit. I'll also show you how we can find the IP address for the Raspberry Pi, since we'll need that information when we set up OPL on the PlayStation 2. Now, since this is the first time we'll be powering on the Raspberry Pi, it needs to go through an initial setup, which will take some time. But every time you turn the Raspberry Pi on after will be much, much faster. So let's go ahead and just fast forward a little bit. Great, now the Raspberry Pi is set up and it's asking us to log in. So type in the username, which is Pi, as well as the password, which is Raspberry, spelled R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Great, we're logged in. Now let's go ahead and grab some network information. In the prompt, go ahead and type in ifconfig. This will pull up some network information. What we're interested in is the IP address, which you can see right here. So go ahead and jot it down somewhere so we can move on to the next step. But first, I'm gonna do a simple setup to get some games onto our USB thumb drive. I think this is the easiest way to add games to this kind of setup. You can also add games to the micro SD card, but it is a bit more complicated and I like to keep things simple. So let's head back to the computer and go ahead and plug our USB thumb drive in. All we need to do is create two folders named CD and DVD in all caps. You can see that I already created them. All my backups of CD based games go into the CD folder. These generally are ISO files that are less than 700 megabytes and all my backup DVD-based games that are less than four gigabytes go into the DVD folder. Now, for those games that are over four gigabytes, you need special software to split the file, such as USB Utility 2.2, which again is listed in the video description. That's what all these files are here in the root of the USB thumb drive. These are games that were over four gigabytes in size and had to be split up. They just remain here in the root of the thumb drive and you don't need to move them to either the CD or the DVD folder. Okay, once you got your game backup files on the USB thumb drive, go ahead and eject it from the computer. So moving back over to the Raspberry Pi, let's go ahead and shut it down. To do that, simply type in sudo shutdown dash H now. After the shutdown sequence has completed, we can now connect our ethernet cable to the Raspberry Pi and then connect that to the PS2. Insert our thumb drive with all of our games, then power on the Raspberry Pi and the PlayStation 2. When FreeMic boot loads, go ahead and open OPL. Well, here you can see that all my games are already listed, but that's because I already adjusted my network settings. You won't be able to see these initially until you adjust your settings first. So let's go over to the menu by pressing start, then go to network settings. Here on this screen, you don't need to mess with the PS2 settings on top, but you do need to adjust your SMB settings. Make sure your IP address is set up to match what we found in our Pi during setup. Port should be set to 445. And here you want share to be set to share. Username and password, you can just leave blank. Great, so now go down and hit OK. And then make sure to save your settings. Go back to your game list and you should now see all of your games listed. Or just do a reset of both the console and the Raspberry Pi. And that's it. You should now be able to enjoy your library of games loaded directly from your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so you have to admit this was a pretty simple process. We now have access to our library of PS2 games directly from our Raspberry Pi, which is fantastic. Now I did run into an issue when setting this up. I didn't have the IP address entered correctly, but thankfully a really talented modder, iFixRetro, caught the mistake and I was able to get this up and running. So big shout out to iFixRetro. So lesson learned, make sure you have all your network settings entered correctly and you'll be fine. Okay, let's take a quick look at the features this method has to offer. Now really there isn't much to say. This works just like any other method of loading PS2 games that I covered on this channel. 
such as loading games from a hard drive, SSD, and even playing games from the memory card slot using the MX4 SIO, also known as the MC2 SIO. Loading games from the Pi is as simple as opening OPL and selecting the game you want to play. And when you want to add more games to your library, simply remove the USB thumb drive, connect it to your computer, and then drag and drop the new games onto your thumb drive. It's as simple as that. So yeah, no unique new features really to speak of, so let's discuss some of the pros and cons of this method. Starting with the pros, this is yet another awesome way to play games on your PS2. It's always great to have options, and now we have quite a few. If you have a Raspberry Pi lying around, this is a great way to put it to good use. This is especially the case when using a slim PS2, which doesn't have the expansion bay, meaning you don't have the ability to use a hard drive. So with the slim PS2, you now have two options. This one using a Raspberry Pi and the MX4 SIO solutions, which utilize the memory card slot. Both work excellent on this PS2 slim. Additionally, if your PS2, slim or fat, has a bad laser that doesn't work anymore, this is yet another great way to add new life to the console. And of course, like I mentioned previously, this works with all PS2 models. However, if you'd like to use this on a fat PS2, you do need a network adapter. Now, unfortunately, as of the making of this video with the part shortage and supply chain issues, Raspberry Pis have become somewhat scarce and relatively expensive. But for those of you who are watching this video in the future, when things have gotten better, this can be a great cost-effective way to load games to the PS2. Or if you just so happen to have a spare one lying around the house, you can put it to good use. And lastly, this method is easy to set up and maintain. Not only is this a great platform for playing PS2 games, but PSX to Pi SMB Share also lets you do other things, like multiplayer gaming for many PlayStation and Xbox consoles, as well as the GameCube, Wii, Wii U, and even the PSP, utilizing the integrated Xlink Kai client. This again is all explained in detail in the GitHub, which I'll have linked down below. So with that, now let's go over the cons. And really there aren't many cons for this particular method. The only one that really sticks out to me is that it is a bit of a cumbersome setup. You do have a bunch of wires everywhere, which can be managed to look more clean, but isn't as clean looking as the MX4 SIO or a hard drive setup. Now, one thing that is a bit of a pain is that you'll most likely be using this method headless, meaning you won't have a monitor or keyboard hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. So doing a proper shutdown of the Pi can be a bit of a challenge. Simply cutting power by unplugging the Pi can lead to corrupt files on the SD card, which is something we don't want. Running a shutdown command is the best way to do this. One of the ways to implement this is to set up wireless functionality, which again is explained in the GitHub. Once the Pi is connected to your network, you can then remotely connect to the Pi over Wi-Fi using a client such as PuTTY. This way you can run the shutdown command from your computer. You can also install a switch to the GPIO pins that would initiate a safe shutdown sequence, but that requires writing some code, which is out of the scope of this video. Other than that, I have to say I think this is yet another great way to load games onto the PS2. Now, like I said earlier, I did several videos covering other methods of loading games to the PS2. So definitely check out this playlist right here if that's something you think you're interested in taking a look at. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.